If you could do the best starting 11 of all time for the U.S. men's national team, what formation would you choose? What players would you go with and why? If you're new here, hi, I'm Filippo, host of Tactical TV, and this is one of our new series here in the channel. And today I'm going to try to make the best starting 11 of all time for the U.S. men's national team, formation, everything. And this is probably a new series for the channel. If it's successful, we'll do more videos like this for different nations. And we can call it Legendary 11. We can do Brazil, El 3, France, Germany, even clubs, Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United, you name it, whatever you guys want to, comment down below. Don't forget to comment your USMNT best of all time and tell me why. But look, it's really not based off accomplishments, okay? The best 11. It's literally the best 11 that I think would perform the best together under the tactics that I want to implement. So it will pretty much be the best that I've seen from each player. It can be even young players like now if I've seen the best from them. Obviously, potential-wise, certain players that are 18, 19 might be better in a few years but from what I've seen so far. So no, it's not based off potential or accomplishments. It's just what I've seen the best out of each player, if that makes any sense. Now for this video, I'm going to go with a 4-3-3, somewhat similar to how Bearhalter plays a lot with our national team in the current moment. And the way it's going to work is we're going to have a 6 in the middle, and we're also going to have two 8s. While one 8 will be roaming around more covering ground, the other will be a more creative 8 that can even play as a 10 at times. So this 4-3-3 could go to a 4-2-3-1, even though I don't want that because of the function and role that I want our center forward to provide and i'll explain that in the video along with that i'll be giving seven players for our bench as well from the legendary 11. with all of that said guys make sure to hit the like button subscribe to the channel if you enjoy this type of content and roll the intro Let's start with a goalkeeper, and my goalkeeper is Tim Howard. Some could try to place Friedel, but no. My goalkeeper is Tim Howard. I'm not even arguing that. World Cup record for saves in one match versus Belgium in 2014. Was responsible for holding several wins for the U.S. men's national team. Over 100 clean sheets for Everton. At one point, he even started for a season at Manchester United. Two Gold Cup trophies, 121 caps for the U.S. men's national team, and it was in three different World Cups. Now, accomplishments aside... Howard was absolutely fantastic. One of the best shot stoppers of his generation, period. Not just in the U.S. men's national team. He is, for me, he is the best goalkeeper the U.S. men's national team has ever had. Let's keep going with the video to the next one. Okay, so my right center back is Eddie Pope. And yes, I know, I know. It, I could have placed maybe Bocanegra here, but, you know... I don't want to put him there. I already have another center back. The next one I'm going to mention that he's already a lefty. So I need to place Pope, a righty. And plus, this guy was absolutely no joke. Despite never playing in Europe, he was absolutely fantastic. He had amazing positioning, high soccer IQ, aggressive, very athletic. And well, I think he would fit very well, be a great partner with the other center back I'm about to mention. And for the U.S. men's national team, he had 68 official matches and 8 goals according to Transfer Market. Pope was also our 2002 center back that knocked out Mexico at that win, 2 a 0 at the round of 16. 2 a 0 Mexico. Three fans, obviously I had to make fun of L3 at one point of the video, but this is not even making fun of them. It's just a friendly reminder that we beat L3 on the biggest USMNT L3 match of all time. The center back that I would go with for this team specifically would be John Brooks. John Brooks has been reliable at the Bundesliga for pretty much his entire career. Most recently, now at his prime, he's playing a big role at Wolfsburg and helped them get a spot at the Champions League last season. He is big, very good in the air, technical with the ball on his feet, can break the line with long passes. He's a lefty center back, which is what I wanted right here. And yes, I would avoid him in isolations, but I think even Eddie Pope could cover that at times. That's one of the reasons I chose Eddie Pope. And well, he does only have one World Cup match for the US, which was in 2014. And if you guys remember, he did score against Ghana. But in 2018, we didn't make the World Cup, so obviously he didn't play. Brooks is likely our best center back for the 2022 World Cup. And considering we make it, which we will, he is my left center back to be for the best of all time for the US men's national team. Remember, it's not based off accomplishments. Otherwise, I likely would have just put Bocanegra there. But Bocanegra, I'm going to talk about him later. He will probably be at the bench. Okay, so for my right back position, this is one that many <laughs> might disagree with me or might not because this player is very young. So we haven't seen the best of him yet. Probably he'll improve, but I think he's already good enough to earn a spot on my team here. And yes, he didn't have a good Nations League as well. And that's Serginho Dest. My right back is Serginho Dest. And look, Serginho Dest is probably one of the most technical players the U.S. has ever had. 
He is a right back for Barcelona, and I think Pope in this system can do a great job covering for Dess's defensive liability issues. Along with my six, which I'll tell you who my six is very soon, he'll do a great job on covering for Serginho Dest, and I think he will connect very well with the winger that I'm going to place for this team. So it'll all make sense later on. Plus, who else would you guys place on Serginho Dest's position? Fabian Johnson? I Okay, it's debatable. There's other options as well, but I'm going with Serginho Des. I think he will fit the team that I want. So the left back, for many of you, it might be difficult to pick. Some of you won't. To me, it has to be Demarcus Beasley. Let's talk about Beasley's club career first. Obviously, we must mention his PSV year, helping them reach a Champions League semifinals run. He played in MLS, Liga MX, Scottish League, and even one season in the Premier League. For the national team, he played in the 2002 World Cup as a starter for the group stage, where he mainly played as a left midfielder, winger-ish at the time. He then was benched for the knockout rounds. He would then go on to be in and out of the squad. He was in the 2009 Confederations Cup, where the US lost to Brazil in the final 3-2. He was in the 2010 World Cup, but in 2014, he was a left back. And well, he played every single minute possible for the US in that World Cup uh, where we lost to Belgium in the round of 16. And he was absolutely fantastic. He proved in that World Cup he can play a very good left back role. Now, along with that, just imagine this team with Demarcus Beasley and Sergino Dess attacking through the sides. And when you see the midfield and you see the wingers, it might make a little bit more sense of how I want to play. So my left back is Demarcus Beasley. Okay, now we're going to go to the six, the holding midfielder, the defensive midfielder. And before we get to that, guys, make sure to hit the like button, please. It really helps the channel. If you like these types of videos, make sure to hit it. Comment down below your best USMNT 11 of all time. And if you want us to do a different nation or club. But let's go to the six. And my six is actually Tyler Adams. Now, Dustin wanted Jermaine Jones for the six or maybe even the eight, which is pretty fair. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to go with Adams in the six. And let me tell you why. You will find out soon if Jermaine Jones is our eight as well, because Dustin also argued that because Jermaine Jones did play mostly as an eight for a good time in the U.S. men's national team. And well, Jermaine Jones actually said it himself and quote him, not me. Tyler Adams is a step in front of me at that age. Those were his words in 2020 at an exclusive interview to Bundesliga. Also, Tyler Adams has developed a lot his game since 2020. He provides per perfect protection to the back line, great connection with the box-to-box -box midfielder and the creative midfielders or even the wingers. Adams is also very technical, very good at pressing. Now, yeah, Jermaine Jones had a better ability to score for the U.S. men's national team, some very nice goals throughout his career. But I don't think we're going to have any issues on scoring goals up top with the players I placed. Honestly, I believe Tyler is already better than Jermaine Jones was on protecting the back line and staying disciplined tactically. Yes, Jermaine Jones tactically, sometimes he wasn't very disciplined, right? So as Bearhalter loves to say, I need Tyler Adams to bring balance to the midfield. So my six is Tyler Adams. So for the eight of this team, the box to box midfielder, I needed a guy that could cover a lot of ground, that could roam, and a dog in the midfield, a guy that would just come and biting the opponent. That's what I would need. And many of you might think, well, you probably picked Jermaine Jones, and no, I, I didn't pick Jermaine Jones again. And some of you might think I have an agenda against him. I absolutely don't. I rate him very highly, but I rate this player higher right now, and that's Weston McKinney. That's my eight. Weston is emerging as a key player for our generation. He's been fantastic, absolutely fantastic, covers a lot of ground, can score goals, is dangerous off corners. We saw that against L3 in the Mexico and Nations League final. If you give him freedom, he gets the job done. He has been very good for Juventus last season and keeps improving year in and year out. Weston would be my eight. No recency bias right there. I really believe Weston McKinney would be better for this team as a box-to-box -box midfielder than even Jermaine Jones in his prime. So that's my eight guys, Weston McKinney. Let's go to the other central midfielder, which will have a role to create. He'll be the more creative one. Essentially the player that, that you know, Greg Berhalter normally uses Sebastian Legette. That's the player that I want to put there, but it, no, 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 it's not Sebastian Legette. I said that role, it's a different player. Let's go to the next one. So for that creative attacking midfielder role, which would be an eight also essentially, but more offensive, obviously, I have Reyna, but no, not Giovanni Reyna, the father. I have Claudio Reyna. Claudio Reyna is the original Captain America. He was the captain of the USMNT for roughly 10 years. He was at the 98 World Cup. He was in the 2002 World Cup, 2006. And in 2002, he even made it to the World Cup best 11 with other superstars like Michael Ballack, Ronaldo, Rivaldo, and Ronaldinho. His club career was also very good. He proved he can play in the Bundesliga, Premier League when healthy. And obviously he was very injury prone and that definitely held his career back. However, he is by far one of the most technical players the U.S. men's national team has ever had. Now, the best I have seen from Claudio, I still think it's better than Gio, but I think Gio Reyna has a higher ceiling. But if right now, at the moment, from what I've seen, the best from Gio and the best from Claudio, 
Claudio Reyna would be my central midfielder right there, central attacking midfielder. Now we're gonna go to the forwards and I'm gonna start with the right winger. Look, for this team, our right winger just has to be Lyndon Donovan. This guy just performed for the US Men's National Team. So how could I not place Lyndon Donovan on the USMNT legendary squad? I like his versatility at top. He could play at the wing. He could play as a second striker. He can even play as a right winger pinching in, which is that's essentially what I would want him to do for this role to give Des space to go up top as well. He has an amazing work rate. He's extremely clutch. And yes, he's not the most technically gifted player of all time, but he's technical enough and the mentality, well, that is off the charts. He played a key role on the 2002 World Cup run, including a goal against Mexico at the Dos Acero win at the round of 16. He played in 2006 and 2010, as well as that legendary 90th minute goal against Algeria to get to the US through and top the group against the overhype everything English national team. Club career in Europe was not impressive, but if I have Donovan available in this hypothetical situation where I can have all the players possible, he is my right winger and debatably he could even be one of my captains I, I don't know who would be a captain of this team but Lennon Donovan is my right winger now the left wing position I'm gonna put Christian Pulisic yes Christian Pulisic is debatably not an accomplishment but he's debatably the best player the U.S. men's national team has ever had again not an accomplishment he's still very young so as I said my left winger will be Christian Pulisic and you know his national team career might surpass many legends like Lyndon Donovan, Claudio Reyna, Clint Dempsey. Only time will tell. If Christian Pulisic stays healthy, he's very capable of being the best USMNT player of all time. Now, Pulisic can be deadly, and for the tactics of this team, him being inverted winger pinching in will be key. That will bring me to our center forward, which will actually be a false nine, our center forward. And I need Pulisic to pinch in behind that false nine that I want to place there. And well, I'm gonna give you guys a hint. Our false nine is Deuce. Yeah, the false nine that I'm gonna play or center forward, whatever you wanna call is Clint Dempsey. And I could not leave my man out of this team. This guy is probably my favorite USMNT player of all time. Yes, I would go with Dempsey as a false nine. He has played that role several times in his career and it has worked wonders. Dempsey has to be on my team. Having him as a false nine is the reason way in the beginning I told you I did not want our creative midfielder playing as a true 10. The false nine and the true 10 would end up occupying the same spaces at times in the field and I don't want that. Dempsey does not only add the winning mentality but tactically he's fantastic, technical as well and clutch. Dempsey would always show up to play three World Cups and in all of them he performed. Club career, he was also fantastic, especially during his Fulham days. I just think he never got the respect he deserved in Europe. And man, Dempsey just looked like a boss on TV during Nations League. You cannot disagree with that. So yeah, I would go with Dempsey as my center forward. Now let me quickly explain how I would want this team to play. Then we'll click, quickly recap the starting 11. And then I'll just tell you guys very quickly my seven players at the bench. So I would want this team to control possession. The fullbacks both can attack. The defense and the goalkeeper are extremely solid. The midfield is more than capable of holding the ball. And when losing into the midfield and forward, they are capable of doing a counter press. I mean, Pulisic is not the best at a counter press. Neither is Claudio Reyna, but McKinney, Adams, Lyndon Donovan, and Dempsey would most certainly make up for that. The false nine can pinch back middle a bit with the team to create off the midfielders while the two wingers, Christian Pulisic and Donovan can pinch middle. Donovan can almost play as a, play as a second striker through the right side of the field. You know Dempsey would play a role like Firmino from Liverpool per se with Mo Salah and Mane pinching in. Uh, that's pretty much what I'm trying to say here. Now, with that said, let me go real quickly through that starting lineup once again and then I'm gonna go to the bench and by now you guys probably hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed this content and commented your best 11 of all time and which nation or club you want us to do next. Okay, just to recap, we're going with a 4-3-3. Our goalkeeper is Tim Howard. Our two center backs are Eddie Pope and John Brooks. The right back is Sergino Dest. The left back is Demarcus Beasley. The holding midfielder, the six is Tyler Adams. Our box-to-box -box eight is Weston McKinney. Our creative midfielder eight is Claudio Reyna. Our right winger would be Lendon Donovan. Our left winger would be Christian Pulisic. And up top, our center forward false nine role would be Clint Dempsey. Okay, so for the bench, I'm not really going to explain the picks very much. I'm just going to skim through the seven players. You guys feel free to comment your bench as well. Don't need to explain. Otherwise, the video will be way too long if I have to comment on seven players once again. And come on, we're super late. I'm joking. We're absolutely not lazy. I just don't want to waste your time. So for the bench, I would bring Frito as one of our backup goalkeepers. Boca Negra would be the backup center back. 
Jermaine Jones, one of the backup midfielders, Michael Bradley, which might be a surprise to many, but I actually think Michael Bradley was pretty good at his prime. I would bring him to be at the bench. Giovanni Reina, I would also bring Gio Reina to be at the bench. Fabian Johnson, because of all that pace he brings, along with his versatility. And the center forward I would bring to the bench would be Brian McBride. And yes, um, surprisingly to many, even Josie Altidore I was considering for the bench in the center forward position, but I'm going to go with Brian McBride. So hopefully this video wasn't too controversial. Hopefully you guys agree with me. Some of you might disagree. It's a video that you can really make any team you want, and there's many fantastic best 11 you can do. And I want to hear yours, so make sure to comment it down below. I want to thank you guys very much for watching, and have a great day.